one more for me, and then just playing, you know, a, a team, a talented team that, you know, that can play off the board. How, how important is discipline and yet staying within your game plan? Got to be disciplined with this team because, you know, got a guy that can actually move around very well and make all the throws. So you got to be very disciplined, got to have your eyes on your man and um, and, get, and get close to the guy. You know, grab a dude because uh, once he starts scrambling, he makes plays. So uh, you got to eliminate those and um, continue to just, you know, play hard and play physical. Thank you, Slay. You're welcome. Jalen just said a few minutes ago that you were one of the guys that he credits with really helping him grow because you play so tough on the receivers in practice. How proud have you been of the growth he's shown, and what does it mean to you for, him to hear, for him to say that? Uh, I've been I've been extremely happy for him, man. Uh, ever since he stepped into the building, man, I've always been a Hurts fan, just, be, you know, before he got to us because the fact that, you know, all the adversity he went through, uh, I was thankful to be able to that he came here and I could just help him become a better player, man, because uh, you can see a guy like that that goes out there and work hard, play hard, and, um, you know, do everything he could for the team, man. And so I told him, you know, anything you need help with, man, just let me know. Uh, I'll tell you how we how we go try to trick you, how we try to force you to this throw, how we got you to that throw, all that kind of stuff. So I did everything in my power to help him know to be the best he could be. And, um, you know, that's why he up for some some – MVP's type stuff, have an amazing year, man. He could continue to keep dominating, man, for along in his career. He a real franchise quarterback. He's a dog. Have you you've been around the game oh. a long time? Have, uh -huh. have you seen a quarterback as devoted or as as uh, picking a brain of a guy like you, like he has? Uh, honestly, nah, not really. You know, cause uh, I've been around, you know, Matt Stafford, and you know. Uh, and he was a he's you know he's a veteran guy, but you know he never was a guy that just kind of like uh, ask questions like hey Slay why you did this and why I did that a little bit. Even though we was cool guys, we was cool, but you know he never did that because you know I think he probably like saw a lot of things. You know it's different with Jalen because I got with Jalen when he was a younger guy and I was a year nine, well year eight when he got into the league. So it's like okay he probably felt more comfortable talking to me at that time. Staff was a lot older than me, so it's like hey I asked probably you know maybe Rasheen or Glover Quinn or somebody like that. But at that time I was a younger guy. Last one for me. You've waited a long time to get here. Hell yeah, How I did. much have you tried to balance absorbing this, soaking it all in, uh, enjoying it with your family as much as you are trying to stay focused to win this thing? Uh, I've been great, man. I, I got my excitement out, you know, the first first day, you know, the welcome party, just walking in and, you know, just going out to eat with the uh, with the DBs. And uh, we just had a little talk about it like we here. But now I'm real more locked in, ready to play. This long as hell. Uh, I wish we'd have came to them, uh, Friday for real now, you know. <laughs> And, and got at the, did the media them days, and, and let's get going. Because, uh, yeah, this this is long. Even though the weather is better here. So, never mind, I lied. I lied. I want to come here just for the weather because it's cold in uh, Philly. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Coach was talking about how important the routine is. Um, Who? Coach Sirianni was talking about how important keeping the routine is. Do you have any routines that you stick to, like pregame naps or family dinners or anything? Uh, I just mean, shoot. I just go day by day. The only thing my routine is basically just with taking care of my body uh, and relaxing mostly. That's really my routine. Man. I, I don't really be all over the place except for when it comes down to taking my body, take care of my body. Oh, been great. I've been trying to be a great mentor because I had great mentors that uh, that helped me reach my potential. You know, I had guys like Glover Quinn. Sheen Mathis, uh, Chris Harris, all kind of veteran guys, digging head of that kind of like, you know, taught me how to be a pro. And that's the same thing I'm doing over here with, you know, Mac, uh, Tay, Ch Chauncey, everybody, like Reed, uh, all, all, all the guys in there, Zach. I'm just trying to do my best as being a leader, man, preparing them for this league because I, I always tell them, you know, this, uh, your seat is rented. You know, this is, not, this is not a permanent seat. My seat always rented, so I'm trying to make sure they stay in that rented seat for as long as they can. So, because, uh, uh, yeah, I'm in year 10, so I ain't got too much goddamn longer. <laughs> How that boy you? Ooh. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll probably give me the opportunity to go talk in front of the team. Uh, I'm glad he kind of prepared me that for early, just in case he called my name or anything. I got to get my mind right, you know, even though I talk from the heart, but it'd be scary. That's probably my most scariest thing for me doing is talking in front of the team because I'm a, like a goofy guy. My heart get erased and my mouth get dry, and I get a little nervous because I really talk from the heart, and I be really meaning what I be saying, and it'd be real genuine. So I be getting real emotional when it comes down to that because I love this game. I love this team. 
So, uh, yeah, I got to get my mind right just in case I get called up. <laughs> oh, that of yours, I done it before, and I was and I was up there nervous as hell. Yeah, yeah, I was nervous, but I, I, I had a message to deliver. Uh, you know, uh, guys uh, set the message, man. They just like, man, you can tell you talking from the heart. But yeah, I ain't up there just trying to like, you know, motivate nobody, man. I just kind of whatever's on my chest, I just kind of let it ride. How your son doing? Man, he doing amazing. Is Getting big as hell, man. You? He fit in. Wow. Yeah, he can, I can't wait till he turn 18 because he out my it's house. It's been that long. Bro. Yeah, yeah. He only got three more years in my house. <laughs> Three more years. I'm finna kick him right on out. My daughter can stay forever, though. So early in the season on Monday Night Football, you did a great job against Justin Jefferson. Yeah. But you don't get as much of a chance to travel. Do you wish you had more opportunity to go get I mean, receivers? I mean, it don't matter about me traveling. Uh, I travel whenever I need to. I told Coach whenever I'm needed, just let me know. But we got an all-pro on the other side. I don't have to travel. You know, it's just sometimes uh, I coach to do film study. And he look at it, he be like, Slay is a very better matchup for this. And he just, you know, hey, Slay, go over here. Go, Hannah, go do that. Or whatever it need to be done, but what if I could do? JB could do, you know. So he a dog. I'm a dog. We just two dogs just barking at folks. What does it say about Jalen the way he handled his adversity in his career to be on the stage at the age he's at? What does that say about maybe what critics got wrong about him? Uh, the only thing critics probably not get right about him is that might be no that got right about him is that him being that ugly. He's an ugly dude, you know. So that's probably the critics got right about him because he's very ugly. They be thinking he a handsome dude. I think he's very, very ugly. But other than that, yeah, man, he proving all the doubters wrong. That's what he supposed to do, and you know, and that's what that's what fear, that's what kind of get him going, get his fire going. But he do a great job in ignoring all that. You know, he don't acknowledge it. He don't, you know, he take it on the chin and just go out there and answer all the bells, all the questions. Uh, the, how he carry himself is just way important, man. He's a real true leader. Came in as a leader, man. Um, I don't know what Nick Saban over there doing, how he get these guys going like that, but. Uh, Every guy I've ran into that's from Alabama, they got a great leadership. Uh, great, man. We just know all of us as a team, as an effort, we put them together, man. As in, like, hey, man, we can work with Chauncey. He's got a hell of a talent, man. A guy that can really flat out play. You know, uh, one of the top safeties in the game. And he only played safeties his first year. Remind me a lot, a lot about Quandre, you know, uh, Quandre did. He did the same thing. He was playing nickel in Detroit with me, and then he went up to uh, went to safety one year, and you know, now you see him a three-time Pro Bowler, you know, at, at safety. So he got a lot of talent, man. But you know, I'm not comparing them two guys, but I'm just saying the same situation as in them guys are very special because and unique because of the fact that they can play nickel and safety and, and dominate at both, both positions. Uh, Say again? Oh uh, man, just enjoy football. I, I say, uh, just love the game, have fun. And that's the main thing. Just really have fun. That's what I do. So uh, having fun, you know, maybe you could get here. It's hard to get because it, it takes a team effort. But not a, not, not one person can make it here by themselves. So all uh, you control what you can control, and uh, and that's what you having fun and enjoying the game. Slay, slay. I was hoping to get there. I was hoping to get it. And uh, Alyssa, uh, speaking of you being kind of outgoing, uh, have you always been that way from a kid? And number two, do you find yourself looking to maybe, as soon as you finish, to get into what we do? Because it seems like you're natural. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty natural with it. But, uh, yeah, I man, I like the media world a little bit. But I won't be too aggravated. Some folks be aggravating a little bit. Some people, not everybody. We got some good people that's good media guys. But then you got them drama starter media guys. I'll be one of them cool ones, man. Ask some nice questions if I ever become that situation. But I will be having a podcast. Y'all make sure y'all tune into that. I was going to ask you about that podcast. So, uh, All that podcast stuff I love, you know, and I'm going to be talking real on there. So they might mess around with me, YouTube, or whoever might have to cut me out. I don't know. You might go viral. Huh? You might go viral. I don't know. Yeah, hey, I'm going to be viral, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, I speak the truth, right? you know what I'm saying? I'm not here to, just, uh, to play the buddy-buddy system game. I like to keep it honest. Uh, honest I'm going to ask honest questions. I'm going to answer honest questions. So... Yeah, man, I'm going to enjoy that media life, man. I've been watching Sherm and all my guys that I looked up to when I was coming into the league do it. Uh, man, everybody keeps telling me it's a perfect fit for me, but I've been practicing already with my own little podcast I do now, so it'll be fun. Let me ask you one last question. Most of you guys have something you do off the field, or a nonprofit or something. Who do you, who do you kind of support and why? Uh, I support my hometown, man. Uh, I got a, like a little a center, you know, for my kids back at crib. You know, a tutoring center that trying to just develop. I don't put a couple kids in school, colleges, what uh called coastal outreach. Uh, so uh, yeah, man, that's why I do big. I'm real big with kids. I do a lot of stuff for kids. I uh, 
I set up private workouts just for fun, you know, teaching kids what I need to, uh, how to get to where I'm at, just give them a chance because uh, it's hard. And, you know, uh, I was raised in that type of crazy environment, so I'm one of the guys that could, uh, can get out and I can go back in and help guys get out of there. Appreciate you, man. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. So, outside of, like, you guys' talent and playing each other on the field, like, are you guys saying anything to him? Like, you know, yeah, you yeah. Shout out to Jalen, man, giving us a shout out, man. I, I love that little dude, dude, man. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, one thing I do is I always try to, you know, help him in the back end. Definitely, you know, we be doing the OTAs, training camp, whenever. We do, like, you know, combo coverages or anything we do. Uh, and um, say like he throw a pick or if he make an incomplete pass or something, he's like, oh, a bad read. I tell him why we did it and how we made you force that situation. And he, uh, you know, he'll understand it, grasp it. And that's what's great about him, man. He, he's take coaching well from players and coaches. So that's a great thing about Jalen, man. That's why I think he's doing so amazing. I'm happy for him. I'm always going to be here for him. Anytime he need me, any type of questions he need me to answer, I will be answering. More questions. Adam Gordon. Uh huh. Oh, man, it's here. It's here. The banana pudding is here. You know, you know, the wife is right now is making it as we speak. She, uh, she called me, and she was up there stirring it up and cracking up uh, the little cookies and everything. So uh, my guys need it. We got it done. Good. Hey, thank you. Slay. Uh, he's just a guy that can make all throws, man. He's very talented, man, very accurate, very athletic. And, you know, so, uh, you know, he's, just a, he's a guy that's just, you know, very, very talented, man. He's special. You know, he's one of a kind, uh, real good at what he does. Uh, so, yeah. Does the uncertainty of some of their receivers affect how you guys have been Say again? Has the uncertainty of some of the Chiefs receivers been affecting the way you guys have been game planning throughout the week? The uncertainty, like, oh, yeah, so, like oh, oh, no, nah, heck no, nah, you can't. Uh, we just going out there, whoever line up, lines up. Uh, that's how we play ball over here too as well. So we know, you know, we're not game playing for like certain like stuff like that. We just go out there to play like they guys, we are guys. So we just go line up and play ball, man. Enjoy it, have fun, and you know, kind of come out with that victory. One last question uh, on your side, Chauncey Gardner Johnson with his time on the Saints, kind of known as that world class trash talker type, always bringing that energy. What can you say about a guy? Like oh man, we love it, man. You know, one thing he did, Chauncey did bring trash talking over, because uh, at first our group was like kind of trash talking but we don't do too much talking Chauncey came up here he fulfilled that whole boy like he he do all the trash talking for us and he backs it up so that's what's great about him man he can talk what he need to be talking and, and he backs it up at a high level awesome. Thank you. yep what are you most looking forward to about your experience on sunday uh my only thing i'm looking forward to is just running out for that first time and just seeing how many lights gonna be flashing then i'm gonna lock in yeah that's the only thing after that I'm good. I'm ready to go. I wanted to see Riri, but I'm but bump Riri right now. <laughs> you think you'll be able to make it feel like a football game and execute it, and it's not going to feel any different to you? Oh yeah, it's not going to feel no different. Uh, of course I'm excited. You know, it's a Super Bowl, of course, but I'm just thankful to be playing this game at a high level, man. And I'm playing at the most important game of my life, so uh, I'm going to enjoy it. Of course, I'm gonna always be nervous because the game situation. I just like, man, I'm in the Super Bowl. It's crazy, but uh. Other, overall, I'm just happy to be here. I'm so excited to you know, play this game, and it's gonna be like 30 million people watching this game. You know, I'm probably way more than that. So it's gonna be wild, and you know, so I'm I'm just looking forward to it. I'm thankful, and I'm just ready for uh, to compete. Closer to like a billion over the world. Huh? Closer to a billion. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm just estimating with a small number, but yeah, it's gonna be a party a billion watching this game. I'm gonna be lit. <laughs> you feel like you'd be good the night before? Heck yeah, I'm going to be good tonight before I'm going to sleep good. I'm going to do it like any, like any other day. You know, uh, this is an important day of my life. The, the, the second most, nope. Nah, nah, I lie. It's not even the second most. It's more like the fifth most important day of my life. My wedding day, my kids getting born, and this. So I was ready for all of them. I'm going to be ready for this. <laughs> top, top five, not bad. Yeah, top five. Slay. Slay, sorry. Yeah. Oh, man, it's great, man. It's a great, great chance, you know, go out here, showcase my talent on the highest like, highest level, you know, in the, in the NFL. That's playing in the Super Bowl. Two, two amazing teams going head-to-head. 
uh, man, I'm just looking forward to it. Like, it's exciting. It's very, very exciting, man. It's always a dream come true. I'm now living it in real life instead of living it on Madden. So I'm having a great time. Uh, probably just hang out, you know, put my feet up. Uh, might need to go to Del Frisco's, go get me that big, good old butter cake. You got to get the butter cake. Uh, and then hang out with the wife, hang out with the kids and stuff, you know, some family in town. And that's really it, man. It's like a normal week for me. Yeah. Slay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm always valuing the moment. I was always just thankful to be able to play this game. So not the organization as in the me winning or losing. Of course, I want to be a winner, but I got to be realistic here. Uh, ain't too many people make it to the NFL. So I'm always going to be thankful and excited about it. But, of course, I do want to win. So uh, with me winning right now, it's a better feeling, of course. But uh, I'm always thankful for both organizations, and um, I just like to win. And I know you're active on, on social media. Yes, I am. You're Oh, that jump be funny. You know what I'm saying? Some people be going overboard, but I do be seeing people comments and stuff, but it be funny sometimes. I be laughing at a, good, a lot of stuff because half of the time, well, they know all the time, some people can't even do it, can't do half of what we be doing out here, but it be funny though. But uh, yeah, man, I be always, I'm always interacting with uh, social media life because, uh, you know, they be want to be in your shoes and want to understand where you're coming from. So I just kind of like let them know. It be fun. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Blank. Blank and ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it about this secondary that makes you guys so special? Not only on the field play, but also in the locker room. Oh, man, we hang out with each other every other day. Uh, we have dinners every Monday, you know, during the season. We was having dinners. We hang out with each other. They all come to my house. Cause they think I got the biggest house, so they want to come to my house. But JB got a lot of money too, so we could go to his house. Uh, and Tay just got a new big old house too. We be at his big house too. But uh, yeah, we be hanging with each other, man. We spend more time than uh, just on the field, you know. So that's I think always about friendships. Cause I told him when I first got into the uh, to the room, I said, Hey, y'all want to be coworkers or y'all trying to be, you know, friends, you know. So uh, and guys like, Hey, we trying to be homies. Like so, uh, these guys I be in this locker room with, I'm gonna be hanging with them when I'm all said and done. You know, when I hang up my cleats one day. We go all hang out, go to parties, like beach parties with each other with our wives or whatever going on, just hanging out with each other. You know, my wife cool with some of these guys, uh, ladies, and stuff like that. So uh, we've been in, like, you know, I love extending my family. Yeah, yeah. Piece of keys with everybody. Uh, just you know, the, the the ability of him to be able to make throws any anywhere on the field, uh, at any time, cross his body, scrambling right, throwing left, or anything he could do. You know, he could do it. Anything you can name, he could do it. So, uh, you know, he's a very very talented dude, man. Future Hall of Famer, man. Keep, he keeps this up. He gonna be one of the greatest ever. He already almost already in that category because you know just the, what he's been doing for so long and uh, at a so young of a uh, young age too as well. So. Uh, it's going to be crazy, man, to see him keep continue to play. I don't know. I'm hoping and praying that he can play up to 20 years so I, I can watch this and tell my kids and tell them I played against him and all kind of great stuff. But, uh, yeah, man, he's going to be amazing, man. Uh, uh, great, great talented man. But, you know, hey, it's up. See, I'm trying to say to AJ. This is what AJ look. Look, I, I'm going to show you all the tat real quick, man. Let me show you all the tat. So, so the tat is, this is the first time I met Kobe. So it's me and Kobe on my leg. So when he passed, I got my boy, you know, rest in peace to Kobe. I got my boy tatted on me with me on there because uh, Kobe is my role model. Kobe is my idol. Kobe is the GOAT. You know, I love Jordan. I love Bron. Bron is one of the GOATs too, but Kobe is the GOAT in my eyes. But, uh, yeah, man, I got a, you know, got a picture on my leg with Kobe and myself on there. It's not just me. Even though I love myself a lot, I do love myself a lot. You know, I think I'm very handsome enough to put myself on myself. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But it's me and Kobe. Shout out to my boy Kobe, man. Rest in peace. That's my dude. I'm so sick right now because, you know, he's a big Philly fan. And I can only imagine 
what he'd probably be doing to me right now as in like talking to me because I know for sure I would have been saying how much I love Kobe and he would have for sure introduced himself again and we would have became best friends. I was so jealous, I ain't gonna lie, you know, because at the time, you know, I ain't at the time, but Fletch been his whole career, but Fletch was on there getting a speech, so I know we in a group chat, I had text him enormous of times, like, man, what was Kobe saying, how was it to meet Kobe, because I was real, real jealous. I got it done right after the Pro Bowl. He passed when I was at the Pro Bowl, sad, sad to say, sad to say, but yes, me and Cole. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, he kind of built who I was as a player, man, just how, how I see the game, why I play the corner position. Because it's mono, mono, one on one, and um, and and that's why I really started like wanting to be a travel corner, you know, just because he was a great defender, you know, two way player, and he always wanted to guard the best player. I always wanted to do the same way because, like, I see it as I want to take the hard job of the team, put a team on my back. So that's why I get it from, you know, watching him do it as a basketball player, playing both ends of the field. I wish I could play both ends, because I would try to do it. But uh, yeah, man, he, he really the one kind of like made me into a guy that really want to be a travel type of corner. Man, amazing. You know, one thing about Minshew, man, he do real good imitating whoever we playing. He do a great job. Of course, we understand, you know, his, his circumstance. He's not as tall as everybody, but he does what we need to do on film all the time, man. He does that at a perfect T. He's amazing. He helped me grow as a player, he helped me get there. Uh, you know, he do he do a great job at coaching and being a scout team player, man. Uh, the whole scout team, I love the scout team. I appreciate them guys for sure, man. Them guys get me going, man. I be Everybody be thinking like, oh, Slay, you got a fast guy. Well, I got one of the fastest guys on my, in the world I'm practicing against every week, so it's going to be too simple. It's going to be too easy. If he if I'm running with him, I can run with anybody. You know, so I'll be thankful for them guys, man. Allen, man, Greg Ward, all them, guys, uh, all them boys, man. Covey, them guys really be helping me get to my potential, man. Me being at 32, man, they keep me feeling young because uh, them guys are very talented, man. So I appreciate them. Man, I'm just saying he attempted them. We didn't say he completed them because nobody really trying to have nobody complete passes, but he attempted them for sure. I mean, they, they trying their best, you know what I'm saying? He is one, uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, but um, that's all you can ask for, man. It's a guy to attempt to do this because uh, everybody's not everybody. I know people are trying to you know, you know, mimic me on the defensive side, but it's kind of hard, you know. So, uh, But, yeah, man, we just thankful for him, man. He do a great job at finding a way to help us get better. Uh, shoot, man, I aggravated folks a little bit. You know, I'm going around just playing around, joking, cracking jokes. Uh, that's what I really need to move. I try to be myself normally. You know, I don't try to do nothing crazy or special. But main thing I know I'll be doing mostly go be listening to my good slow jams because they really get me in the mode, get me going, get my mind right, uh, remind me where I come from. Uh, all the good slow moves, 90 music, get me going. So uh, I listen to my good music, get my mind right, watch my film. And I be chilling. I don't be in the dark, but I be just having a TV out, just vibing. Oh, uh, I'm always giving credit. You know, I'm, I'm gonna give credit to everybody on the, on the defense and the offense because uh, it's just a team sport. And of course, that D line is humming. You know, we but you know we back there humming with them. So we trying to match their energy they bring and. Uh, and then they, they match our energy we bring. So we're great. We, we, we complement each other very well and on, on every end. You know, linebackers too, man. So we just all try to be a great defense, man. We all came in this game and just basically said this offseason is like, hey, man, let's, let's do, you know, leave it out there on the field. Nobody's bigger than the defense. You know, it's the defense, then you. So uh, 
that's how we do it, man. And that's why we paying off so good, man. Everybody just, you know, happy for each other. No, I did not get skinny Batman from his tattoo, but that's kind of crazy. I did not see that. Uh, I got to look again because it's probably on his leg. But I ain't pay attention to his leg like that because I think it would be kind of crazy to look at another man's leg staring at it. But, yeah, he, but, you know, he's seen it. It's just awkward at the time because he's like, dang, Slay, you got a tattoo face, tattoo your face. Like, nah, man, it's me and Cole. But, you know, he's, he, he tried to get me good, though. It's good, though. It's my dog. It's going to be amazing, man. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what God's got to say, man. And, you know, because a lot of stuff will be, you know, strong-hearted, strong feelings. So, man, biggest game of all of our lives, you know, some guys been here before, but some guys didn't. And, you know, so we got to cherish this type of moment, man. You know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime. Like I said, it took me 10 years to get here. So I'm very thankful. And, you know, some guys, this is a rookie that's already here. So they living it up, you know. So uh, everybody get a different experience of what's going on right now, man. I'm sure a lot of people got some stuff to say, man. I'm so looking forward to hearing that, man, because I'm ready to play, man. Give it out my hardest, play my hardest, play my heart out. Uh, leave everything out there on the field because there ain't no turning back out of that because uh, the season over with. Man, it means a lot to me, you know what I'm saying? Because, man, it's been real. I mean, in seven years, I ain't never get past the first round. Eight years, nine years. And, you know, now I'm in year 10, I'm at the Super Bowl. So, man, this is wild, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, of course, I love money. We get paid more money, you know what I'm saying? So, it's even better. Like, uh, get money and winning. And, oh, oh, man, it's amazing, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm just thankful, man. I'm, 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 done, I'm good on it now, as in, like, the calm my nerves down. But uh, when I first, when I first, you know, won NFC, I was like, man, I try to hold my tears in, so I did pretty good though. Uh, I, 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 man, look here. I saw the first one. I can only imagine what the second one would be with the city. So I'm looking forward to it, man. You know what I'm saying? So we got to go out here and play our hardest, man. Come home with a dub, so we can have another one for these guys. I wanna, you know, guys that's been here, the city deserve it. Uh, the guys that deserve it, this organization deserve it, so I'm, it's only right to go out there and play your hardest. Yeah. She she got that Uden on her, you know what I'm saying? We gotta call her that Uden, you know? So she got it, you know, she was up, she called me earlier, she was making it. So, uh, yeah, man, she better put a foot in it. We're gonna call this one the, the, uh, the Super Bowl pudding. <laughs> Me? Yeah. 11. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's tricky. Can be tricky. And, and the biggest thing is, uh, I feel like, you know, Philly, you know, is never respected and no, and, and no sports or anything going around. We always got to go out and earn it and prove it. And that's something that honestly we've done uh, all year as a team. We would not have proved it. You know, there was nothing fraud or nothing fake. Um, I mean, we aren't posers or, you know, want to be tough guys. You know, we just go out, work together, and, you know, and prove that, you know, we always deserve to be talked about. But, again, you know, it's, as we always say, nobody like us, and we don't care. It means a lot. You know, I always appreciate it being a captain. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, it's always great, you know, that my teammates, you know, believe and trust in me, respect me as I also respect them um, in the sense of, you know, leading them. Um, and, you know, it's always, you know, an honor, you know, to be a captain, especially, obviously, you know, my fifth or sixth year, fifth year, you know, being a team captain. Um, so it's special to me, and I obviously uh, embrace every moment of that. How you doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so we're on the final day, Fletch, of uh, availability. I feel like y'all vets are just, you can do another day. You're so good to see uh, I mean, we enjoy it. You know, it's part of the job. It's part of being a pro. Um, you know, and the great thing about it is, you know, it's it's it's, it's not about us at the end of the day. Um, it's about you know the situation that we're in. Um, obviously, it's about the fans. You know, everybody that's always supportive. Um, they want to hear from us, and and that's the thing about it. You have to enjoy it, embrace it, and just you know and deal with it. And and that's why we're pros because we actually do a lot. Uh, we ask to to be able to handle whatever's thrown at us, and and you have to love it. You've been through the ups and downs of this franchise, obviously. What what is the meaning of it's a Philly thing? It's a Philly thing, right? So if you know, you know. Uh, that's that's the biggest thing about it. I mean, the fans are passionate about about everything, uh, and you know they love you, and then you know they still love you when you're not doing good, but you know it, they want you to do better, and 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 that's the, that's the biggest part I take from it. Absolutely. How about now? How ready are you? Well, I mean, we're ready. I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm, you know, it's the same thing that I've been, you know, same routine I've been doing all year. Um, as, you know, obviously being a leader um, and, you know, just being myself. And that's the biggest thing is having a lot of fun now. Um, obviously, it, it goes into it. Um, and, you know, I really enjoy, you know, coming in every day and being around the guys. And, you know, it's, that, that's what's really making it special for me this year. Just getting after them early. I think the biggest thing is, you know, um, just get after them early. Um, you know, just kind of just make them feel that if you're not, we got to hit them. They don't have to be sacked. We've got to hit them, um, force them to make some bad throws. Uh, we know that he's really good when he's moving out of the pocket. Uh, we know that they work. You can tell that they work scramble drills every single day because, you know, when he's out of the pocket, guys are, you know, going towards him and they complete a lot of passes that way. Um, but, you know, we just got to uh, win our one on ones also. When guys get a chance for one on one rushes, we got to win them and win them fast. You're welcome. I mean, it's, they, they, they do a lot of different stuff, you know. They have sh sh things that they, they they're going to do something we haven't seen before, you know. But we got to be, you know, prepared for it and doing our job and make sure that we're all in the right spots and, you know, get them on the ground. That's the biggest thing, just get them on the ground. I mean, teams do it every week. <clears throat> I mean, they have scheme plays that they're going to scheme us with. Um, and, you know, and we just got to take if they complete a – play the pass or you know break up break a run which we're hoping not um we just got to get them on the ground you know and, and and that's that's gonna be a one and two one or two play thing for them where there's gonna be schemed and normally you get those in the first 15. We all feel disrespected, you know, and that's 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 us, right? Because it's Philly, you know. Nobody respects the city of Philadelphia when it comes to sports. We all feel disrespected, and we just need to finish. You're welcome. We felt good, you know. We knew that um, it didn't matter what their record said, what they were. We knew who they, who they had at quarterback, and it's it's always a challenge when you got a veteran quarterback, you know, like like Aaron Rodgers, and you know, we he know he honestly kind of reminds me of you know he just know where he know where the ball going before you snap it, you know, and you get that, you know, with smart quarterbacks, and he's been around around the, you know around the league for a while, and uh, you respect it, but you got to always bring your A game with him. You always up for the competition, right? And, and and that's why we do it. That's why this game is so fun. Um, and that's why you know we play at such a high level. 
because you know you never know what's thrown at you. You just be, you just have to be able to handle it, uh, and you know if you have success, you do. Which we had success that week. Uh, I think they did a really good job when we played them. Um, a team that we respected. Um, um, going into going into that game. I mean, he made a throw at the end of the game, um, and you know, he, he, he made. It, I mean, he um, the receiver ran. You know, we got out ran. So it was just one of them things where it became a foot race. Um, you know, obviously, um, we probably could have been better as a defense. You know, um, but uh, he made he made a play. They scored. He get paid too. Just to stay focused, you know, a lot, a lot of young guys on the team and a lot of guys that, um, you know, had some success in college, you know, played in championship games in college, you know, and just want to let them know that, you know, it's, it's still a game of football. They're still going to measure the same. The boss going to have the same amount of error in it. It's going to, it's, everything's going to be the same. You know, you're still going to wear the same helmet. You're still going to wear the same shoulder pads. It's just how focused are you um, when, you know, when, you know, when the time comes. Um, and you just can't let the moment get too big. You just got to be in the moment right then, and, and it just can't get too big. I'm sure everybody would be nervous. You know, that kind of goes into the game, you know, um, every, every game. It don't matter. It just might be have a little more nerves than, than normally, but after the first play and getting in and, and making the contact and, and, and doing everything and kind of get settled in, it'll all play out. No doubt. I know that the Philly fans will show up, uh, which they've done all year, home or away. So um, we know that they, they always support us. Um, and, you know, we're going to we're going to do our best out there. You know, we know it's, we're playing against a really good football team, the Kansas City Chiefs, and uh, it's going to be a good game. Uh, I think that, you know, the game is going to be one up front um, with two two really good groups on both sides of the ball. So um, it's, it's just going to come down to it. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we make more plays than they do. Um, and, you know, hopefully we force them to make a bunch of mistakes. He's, he's leaving it open for us, and I'll probably be one of the guys to go up there and, uh, you know, say a few things. You know, kind of really haven't thought about what I wanted to say to the team yet. Um, but I obviously, I have to keep it short because if somebody else wants to speak, I can't be too long-winded. Uh, I actually might go last because, uh, honestly, believe it or not, a lot of guys like to hear me speak. So uh, I, I might go last, uh, or I think he wanted me to go first. So uh, whichever one he wants, uh, I, I'll do. So haven't really thought about it, but I, I, it's going to be pretty good. It's all come from the heart. It really all comes from the heart, and I think that's that's the part that you know, all of my teammates you know kind of love about me when I'm up speaking and or or you know just trying to trying to motivate guys. And the biggest thing is about me when I'm speaking to to my teammates is I'm speaking real, you know, realistically, and you know they know, um, you know, and they get that feeling. You know, I can't, it won't get too bad because some guys get too hyped and can't can't let guys you know peak too soon. So. Uh, I'll probably try to keep it simple, but I'll also motivate those guys and make sure that they're ready to go to bed and uh, and wake up the next day and, um, and it'll be game day. Um, what would your message be to youth who are getting into football and have dreams of being at the stage where you are now? Just just to believe in yourself, you know. That's, I tell that to all, all any any young any young kid or um, or even high school. Um, I just tell them always to believe in yourself, and if you don't believe in yourself, then you know nobody else will. Uh, and you know, you have to trust people. And the biggest thing is, is being coachable, um, trusting whoever coached you and, and what position you're playing. Um, and motivate yourself. Be your own motivator. Don't wait for somebody else to motivate you. And, you know, kids love to hear that, um, especially, you know, younger kids, because they look up to any kind of pro athlete. And you have to respect that. And, and, and at the same time, you you got to be honest with them. Uh, and, and that's how I always am when I'm talking to a you know, small group of kids. Five years ago. 
I don't think this feeling ever gets old. You know, just in a different hotel. We had a different stadium. Obviously, a different team on both sides. So, uh, you know, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, just staying focused on, on, on what's what's in front of us and and not peaking too soon. Um, and, and that's one thing that, you know, I always try not to do. I try not to peak too soon and, and make sure that I'm saving all the energy and, and getting my body ready to go uh, for Sunday evening. Um, I don't think you hype them up. I think the main thing is, is just keep them focused. Uh, you know, keeping them focused on the task at hand and that's doing their job, play in and play out. Um, holding each other accountable and playing as one. Um, because I feel like sometimes you got to hype somebody up, then, you know, you almost, especially in this sport, you know, it, it, it kind of don't, it's all fake. Um, but, you know, this team is so motivated to, you know, to, to be better and to get to the top of that mountain. And as I always tell everybody, we're not done yet. You talked a little bit about your body, but how long, how, how have you been able just to stay in this game for so long? <laughs> Man, just, you know, I always look at it, you know, um, just the way I train in the off season. With uh, my, you know, my trainer you know, with Dion is, you know, less is more. And when I say that, you know, the way that we train and the way that the things that we focus on um, has helped me in, 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 in my career. Um, you know, it's helped me, you know, play at a high level of my career. And, and just I'm honestly just very blessed to be healthy um, through it all. And you just can't give enough credit to the people that, that a lot of people don't know about. Um, just the hard work that you put in and you know, I'm not a big post everything on social media guy what I'm doing and I just like to work behind the scene and just show up on you know when it's time to go How satisfying is that you're not Frank Sinatra by any means, but that you're doing it your way and how you wanted to do it How satisfying that you're doing this your way and that you're not you know doing any Posting limelights or anything like that. How satisfying is that for you? And sometimes he, he you know obviously you know you want some kind of content to see yourself, you know and, and change in the body or, you know, movements and, and certain things from week to week or month to month that we're doing. And, you know, we may post some every now and again. It may be, it ain't gonna be a whole lot, but, you know, just the way that he handled things, you know, he's such a pro um, and, and he, he know, not only do he want success for for me, but he wants success for himself. And you really, you know, you really appreciate that. This defense, tell me in a couple of words, what is it? What can you say about this defense? Just 11 guys. You know, obviously we have more guys that roll in, but when they're on the field, it's 11 guys that's relentless. You know, guys that, that know, you know, you have 10 other guys out there that's, that's going to do their job and, and, and compete as one. Um, and, and the biggest thing about this defense is there's always an eraser somewhere. And then when I say that, is, you know, if I may, somebody may miss a tackle and somebody has to come in and erase that problem. And then that's, that's just been our deal all year. Um, and we, we, we just we have our standard, and you know we have to own up to that standard. And when the standard's not there, you go and talk to that. You go and talk to whomever it is about it, and tell them, hey, this is the way we're going to do this, and it's going to be this way. And and that's the biggest thing. Another big thing about is every guy, every guy in that room respect each other, and, and know how to handle every every single personality in every single personality in that room. And uh, we, we all just talk. Talk things out. There's no streaming. There's no yelling. There's not a lot of not a lot of rah rah rahs going on. And we talk things out and we move on. How much? You didn't say this word, but how much trust is there in the defense? In this there's, defense. There's always trust, you know, because you know, it don't matter what he call, it don't matter what JG calls. You know, we got to go out and execute the game plan. Uh, we got to go out and do our job because you know he can call whatever, but if we don't get out and execute it, and and don't trust him calling whatever he's calling, and 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 just say. Um, Slade don't trust Epps or whatever he controlling the back end back there. Then there's we're, we're not in this position right now. Obviously, you've been in this situation before and been in this position this game. Uh, but have you learned anything or taken anything away from any of the other veteran D tackles on the team that are new this year, like Linville or Indomitian? Is there anything you've taken from their games that maybe has changed your approach to this? We're all studied together, and we're all in the same room together. And we all talk about and discuss about you know, and that's week in and week out. It's just not just this week. You know, we all get get together and. and we all go over what's what's you know the situations of the game, and uh, I think we've did a, done a really good job since they've been here, since they've been here with it. Even before, you know, we always go and discuss uh, things as a group, and that's that's helped all of us so far. And is there anything you're telling Jordan to be conscious of him playing in this game as a rookie? Just don't let the moment get too big, um, and and that's that's always what it is. You know, Jordan's played it the highest level in college football so now he's getting a plan to play at the really high the highest level in you know his rookie year and he you know he's been in those type of big games and, and you know I was telling him just the only thing about it is the lights will be a little bit brighter 
there'll be a lot of people, a lot more celebrities and whoever else going to be on the sideline before the game. Just kind of block that out and get ready to go. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, you know, retirement isn't isn't um, you know something I'm thinking about right now. Um, obviously, you know, I'm still you know I'm still here, um, but you know, right now I think my biggest focus is right now is just you know getting ready for Sunday. You know, I'm, I'm not thinking about that. I feel great, um, you know, as a player, um, healthy. Um, so I really haven't thought about any of that yet. Um, but you know, I'm in a position right now where um, I'm just really focused on a game on Sunday. I think the biggest thing with a, with a lot of people is, is really um, not talking about is the way they run the football. They have a unique way of the way they, they run the ball. Um, and, you know, that's getting overlooked. But, you know, us as a defense, we aren't, we aren't overlooking that. We know they like to run the ball. And when they can run the ball, they have success throwing the ball. So the biggest kid's going to be stopping the run and, you know, and holding, you know, you know and being disruptive and make them make mistakes early and often. And, and that's some stuff that we've been talking about all week. <laughs> man just you know just just really just you know just want to keep keep going um you know obviously you had success i've had success with pro bowls and super bowls and all pros and you know all of that type of things but the thing is 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 how bad do you want it you know and and right now um it's just it's just one of them things we're in a position right now to take the next step um so right now it's just just focus you know i don't want to step ahead but come next wednesday You'll have a Super Bowl ring, another Super Bowl ring. What would be your thoughts on that? Man, right now my thought is just to get to tomorrow's practice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go through it and, uh, you know, do the routine things. And, and, and then, you know, next Wednesday I'll better pick my head up and see where we're at. All right, thank you very much, man. Good you bet. Fletcher, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing a mobile quarterback like Patrick Mahomes? It's always a challenge. It's really a challenge facing any quarterback. But, you know, this guy, he's a special kid. You know, he's very special. Um, he make the throws. He make the throws on the run. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, when you think you got him on the ground, you don't. And thinking about the uh, Philadelphia Eagles from 2017, what is the biggest difference? Just a lot of more guys, you know, different guys, different coach, um, you know, different defense, different offense, the way we scheme things. Uh, and the biggest thing is both teams are really good. So, uh, you know, the 2017 got it done. But this, 2000, this, this team now, we haven't done nothing yet. And regarding mindset? What our mindset is, our mindset, mindset is to, to go in and attack the game, you know, um, and, and, be, and try to be the better team on Sunday. Thank you. All right, with so much defensive line rotation, how do you stay focused when you're on the sidelines watching your teammates play defense? How do you keep the other defensive linemen with you focused when it might be two, three drives before you get back in? Um, I mean, I don't think it's two or three drives, but, uh, you know, I think Coach Rock did a really good job of keeping the guys hot. When I say keeping them hot, you know, make sure everybody's is ready to go. You know, we, we have our sequence of rotation, and um, you know, we've since I've been here, we've always had that. So you got to respect it. You know, you can't get mad when you're coming out, you know, um, out of the game, and, and everybody's got a role, right? We all um, accept that role. Um, and whatever whatever coach asks you to do, and go in, and be in, and be out. Um, you just you just have to do it and know that, and, and trust him. Uh, and that's the biggest thing, trusting him and, and, and um, the way that he rotates, rotates us in and out. When, when I'm talking to uh, some of the defensive tackles that have a really heavy snap rotation, they say one of the advantages to that is that you have the ability to set up your moves uh, and, and get guards and centers to kind of get used to what you're doing before you, know, you break your rhythm. How do you kind of replicate that without as many reps? Because we practice it all the time. And, you know, we're fresh, right? And, you know, coach we really, ha really want to have us – you know, in the fourth quarter when we got to go rush, we're now only played 30 snaps all game. So now I'm still fresh and I wore down from, you know, getting the fourth quarter and, and already at 55 to 60 snaps. Um, and, and that's the thing you appreciate about it because it just it helps you in the long run. It don't, it's don't, it don't beat the body up as much um, and you're always ready to go. So uh, for us, it's, it's always we're working on our craft every day. We go out and we're working, you know, on everything we need to do because we know that you only get so many rushes before the next guy got to come in.
Uh, you mentioned Coach Rocker a couple of times now. Can you speak to kind of the impact that he's had on, on your growth as a veteran player and the development of the younger players? Respect. You know, everybody respect him. Uh, he, you know, he respects us, we respect him as a player. And, you know, he's, he's a coach that never gets out of the character. You know, he, he's going to tell the truth, but Jordan never see him get out of character. And, you know, when we show up to practice, we come to work, you know. And, and that's the thing about him. You know, he want guys to work. He want guys to get the job done, know what they're doing when they're out there and doing hard. Thank you. Uh, they're elite. You know, they all complement one another. Um, and and those guys, they, they're so competitive against each other. And, and they want what's best for, for them. You know, play in and play out. You know, day in and day out. Drill in and drill out. You know, if you get a chance, you know, you probably you would probably never get a chance. But if you see the way those guys compete and, and practice and drill, um, you know, Coach Denard Wilson do a really good job of, of handling those guys and and, 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 and sands of, you know, the way that it shows on Sunday. I mean, he came in and went to work, and, and that's what pros do. You know, no matter where you're at, you know, no matter if you get traded, a um, week before or two days before, you come in, you handle business, and, and that's what he did. You know, the, the group accepted him right then, and, you know, he's brought a lot, you know, to our defense, to our team. You know, he flies around. Obviously, he's a chatty patty. Still love him. But, uh, you know, he shows up every, every single time he's in the game. I mean, it's, you know, he's he's a little mobile. You know, he's a mobile, um, obviously. Um, but a lot of his a lot of his throws come from him scrambling on the run. You know, those big plays, or you know, um, he's special. So the biggest thing is going it's going to come down to uh, you know us uh, you know getting to him early and often, disrupting him, forcing him to make mistakes. You just got to prepare, right? I mean, and when you, when you start running, just get him on the ground. Um, and that's the biggest thing. Get him on the ground uh, and uh, play the next play. You just can't get frustrated with it. Get him on the ground and play the next play. Just the way he demands respect, you know, the way that he let the leaders lead. And that's the thing why so many players here love playing for him because he let the leaders lead the team. And when he got to step in, he does. And, you know, you got to really, really love love that, you know, especially from a coach going into his second year. Um, and, you know, the way that he handled himself, the way that he handled his team. Um, and, you know, we love playing for him. How you doing? My name is Gary Jones. I'm from VMH Sports. I want to ask you a question that I'm quite sure nobody has asked you. Can you give me the cons and the pros of the combine? <laughs> I mean, the combine is fun, obviously. Uh, it's a little, you know, it just, just goes and shows. You got to get a chance to go out and show your talent. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's a chance to show it. 32 teams, you know, all the work that you put in into your college career to get to where you are now. And that's why so many players get that invite. I mean, it's, 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 it's a long process, um, you know, for especially for, you know, college athletes. You know, they're doing things that they probably – I probably was, wasn't doing, you know, they're getting questions answered that they probably know they get answered. Um, obviously, you know, these teams do a really big background check on you and they want to know about about your life. And and, and, that, and that's a lot that goes into it. So you got to be mentally, mentally prepared for it, but also ready to do those drills and stuff. And the reason I ask that question is because sometimes you might have a bad day or a bad week, but that doesn't mean you're a bad player. Sometimes you can fail in the combine and turn out to be a superstar just because you could run the 4-5 or, or something like that in 40 or, or do the vertical jump. And, and, and I'm, you know, I've been through the combine several times. And I've, you know, they check this off and check that off. And it seemed like, okay, if you was uh, expected to go number one, you might slip down to number two. So some guys decide they don't want to go through the combine because they might have a bad week. Well, this thing is about it's about um, getting getting comfortable being uncomfortable, right? I mean, some guys don't really – don't really, really perform at the combine, but their pro day, they're going to do everything. And, and that's, a, that's the biggest thing about it is you always have a second chance after the combine. So, um, and, and that's why I think that's why they do a lot of pro days, uh, okay. just getting comfortable being uncomfortable. So uh, for me, I was one of those guys. You know, I, I did everything at the combine, and I only did, like, drills at, at our pro day. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. You bet.
What are you and the guys that won the, in Minneapolis? What have you been trying to impart on the younger players about what Sunday's going to be like and how to get through it? You know, obviously, it's, it's, uh, you, you tell them a few things, but the biggest thing, uh, we, the biggest thing is we play here early in the year. And, you know, I told a couple of guys that, uh, yeah, guys, we play here, but the stadium's going to look totally different, uh, you know, this time when we get in there on Sunday. Um, obviously, you know, on my, and when we went, I obviously got a chance to go to the stadium uh, before the game and uh, just kind of soak it in. But, you know, as you know, I've been telling a lot of guys, if, if, you're not, if you normally don't catch the first bus, just catch the first bus. Um, go in and soak it in and um, go in and get ready to roll. No, no, not, nothing really changed. You know, um, I think both coaches did a really good job of obviously Doug and, you know, Coach Seriani. He did a, did a they did, they're doing a really good job of trying to keep things as normal as possible. When I say that, our practice, you know, um, obviously the schedule changes um, because, you know, we have to do, you know, mandatory media and a lot of different things to travel and, and, and such and such. But, and that's the biggest, that's the only difference. You know, our practice, the practice schedule on the field, things have been exactly the same we would do if it was a home game. Just, just getting, getting, getting to it, right? You know, hitting the last few, the last few notes of that, that national anthem, um, and, and getting ready to kick the ball off. Um, so, being that you were um, on the list, uh, second best dress. What do you think that does? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Who was first? I don't know, but we're gonna focus on you. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Who was first? We're gonna check. I'll get back to you. Second. <laughs> yeah. NFL Who said that? Out of the whole league, and so many of you, that's still good. The Athletic, they rated all of you all. They had you at number two, but there's so many players. So even though you are number two, that's still so good. I got to see that. Nah. Okay. It better be an eagle that's number one. A Philly guy, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be. So being that, you know, black athletes really have revolutionized how we see style, what is, how do you think that kind of just gives you all that confidence and that swag that, you know, you guys can just come in and wear whatever you want? I'll tell you this, that uh, normally I don't know what I'm wearing until game day because obviously uh, I will say um, I don't dress myself. Uh, my girlfriend actually picks out all of my clothes that I wear, and I really don't know what I'm wearing until, uh, until, un until Sunday morning. Uh, when I unzip the whatever bag it's in, and she do a really good job at it, though. You know, obviously she let me see sometimes, but not all the time. I just go in, whatever's in the closet, I put it on and walk out the door. So she do a really good job, but you know, obviously um, I'm still not number two, though. So I don't know who said that. So you describe yourself as a small town kid. How does it make you feel to be able to just walk into a store and be able to buy anything that you want now? <laughs> I'm very humble by that. You know, um, obviously, um, you know, like. I can walk in any store and buy anything, and uh, you know that's a blessing, and and that's that's been a blessing for the last decade or more of my career, of my life, and uh, I really appreciate it. You know, knowing that all the hard work goes in, and being from a small town, you just can't let that get in the way of anything that you want in life, any kind of success you want in life, and and having others around you that believe in you. But in order to do that, you have to believe believe in yourself, and and, and I'm a big believer in myself, and it's the people that support me. Last question for you, Wayne. You know, the rookies are coming in. They see how you vets dress. What are some tips you would give them on just really defining their own personal style and not really trying to replicate what they see? I'll tell you the biggest thing. Um, I was my rookie year. Um, I was going into the first home preseason game. I think I wore basketball shorts and a T-shirt. And Deuce Staley grabbed me to the side. He said, don't let me ever catch you wearing that again. He said, you're a pro dressed like a pro. And from that day forward, I always do that. Thank you. Time. Oh, yeah. Ready to come on. But you were drafted by Andy Reid, so describe his impact on you as a coach, and what does it mean to be playing against him? Um, just his impact as a coach. Obviously, you respect him. Um, and, you know, and the, and the biggest thing is that he gave me, excuse me, he gave me a chance to, to be where I am today. And obviously, you know, that was special. Um, you got to respect a coach like that. And we're looking forward to going against them. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we know it's, it's going to be a heck of a game. They got a really good ball team over there, and we're looking forward to it.